How's it going everyone? This is Kevin. Today I want to bring along with me to talk about a great minimalistic camera setup for on-the-go photo and video shoots. So let's jump right into it. So first things first, regardless of what camera system you use, this will be able to be used accordingly to whatever camera brand you shoot, whether it's full frame or APS-C, I'll be giving you examples of what you can use for either. I'll be talking about the exact setup that I use for me, but you'll be able to kind of put into perspective for the brand that you are using for yourself, whether it's whatever camera you're using and a lens that will go with it to correlate with the same setup that I have. So we're gonna cover all the bases for on the go, minimalistic kind of style of shooting for vlogging slash photos on the go. So the first thing you're gonna need obviously is your camera. Whether you shoot with Sony, Canon, Fujifilm, whatever it is, you just wanna make sure that you have your camera and know what it is. Is it a full frame or is it APS-C censored style? Because depending on which one it is, this type of lens will have to be according to your camera because if it's APS-C it's going to be cropped in so you're going to have to look at the perspective cropping factor to see which type of lens would it make sense for you. For example this is a full frame camera the Sony a7 III. This is the one that I use for all my videos when I'm vlogging and everything on the go and I use my Sony a7 R3 usually for photos which I'm using today for video. The lens of my choice will be the Tamron 28 to 75 if I would only have to keep one lens only for minimalistic shooting and being on the go and traveling light. The reason why is because 28 is wide enough when it comes down to filming myself, but I also have the range to all the way to 75 if I want to take cool photos, whether it's wide or up close and have that compression. So there is another lens that you can get as well, which is a Sigma 24 to 70, which they have it for Canon, I believe even for Nikon, and also for Sony. The reason I went with this, I made a video previously, so if you haven't checked it out, it'll be down below in the description area to see how this lens performs. So now if you're shooting APS-C, you do not want to get a 24 to 70 because it's not going to be a 24 to 70. Realistically, it's gonna be a crop in factor of 1.5, 1.6, depending on the camera brand that you use. So with that being said, you want to go with a 16 to 35 lens. I personally would recommend going with a lens that is for full frame cameras because if you ever decide that you want to upgrade to full frame, now you don't have to get rid of the lenses and have to get full frame glass. It is more expensive, so I understand that, but if you're going to look at it in the long term investment, it makes more sense that way. So for example, Sigma has I believe a 16 to 35, the Tamrons have a 17 to 28 wide lens, and then obviously they have the perspective camera brands that have their own. Canon has a 16 to 35, so does Sony. They're more expensive, but if you have that in your budget, I would recommend going with what is best for the native lenses for your camera. Usually they tend to work a lot faster, not always, but it is something to keep in mind. So now another thing that you're gonna need for sure is going to be a nice microphone to record yourself to get nice sound. I've used this microphone, the Rode Video Micro, for about a year, maybe a little bit more now, and I've been really happy with how it turns out and how the sound works. I've been getting better at trying to edit the sound so that I can have crispier sound for you guys. Obviously my previous videos when I was first starting, I wasn't sure what I was doing. So it takes time to understand your gear and or editing software to get better, but definitely recommend having a nice little microphone to go with your camera setup. And lastly, you'll need ND filters. Why? Because if you want to get that nice kind of cinematic look with the aperture being at the lowest it can go, whether it's 1.4, 2.8, whatever your lens may do, you want to have an ND filter to make sure that you can basically block out the light so that you can go at that rate to not overexpose and or have to put your shutter speed up or your aperture up to not get that blurry background anymore. So ND filters, the variable kind are really great. If you can't get a variable kind, just get any ND filter that you know you'll be using for your shooting, but it's very, very important to have. And lastly, one last thing, if you shoot Sony that doesn't have a flip out screen, I recommend this Uric mirror thing because you can put it on your camera to make sure that you can see yourself basically filming yourself. So just like this, you put it on there. So now I can flip out my screen and see myself when I'm videoing. So if your camera does not have a flip out screen in the sense of the, the one rotating the screen, this is a good one to have if your camera does a flip up screen. 
And this is my setup. Basically, that's all you need right here. So now, if you are going to be vlogging though, I do recommend getting a gorilla pod. Well, mainly because you'll need to be, um, you know, filming yourself. So this will help you make sure that you are able to hold your camera to you and talk to the camera. But other than that, if you don't plan to be vlogging so much and anything like that, you don't really need it. And you are able to kind of just hold on to the camera and vlog this way as well if you really want to. It's a little bit more tiring, but it's, you know, player's preference right there. And by the way, I'll have all my setup and all my gear linked down below if you want to check it out and see what I'm actually using, whether it's this setup itself or any other gear that I use on the daily. I have it linked down below if you want to check it out and yeah, it helps you out in any other way. But now that we have our setup all nice and ready, we're going to go out and create and use this as if I was going out to do a minimalistic shoot and show you a little bit behind the scenes, how I would film myself and everything with the setup, just so you can see what it looks like on the go. So now that you have your setup, obviously now we're out here. This is how we start vlogging. I'm going to show you some behind the footage, basically using my B cam to show you what this would look like if I was just out here vlogging and trying to just showcase myself doing these videos with this minimalistic rig. Honestly, I love, love, love the quality of this lens. So if you are looking to decide between the 24 to 70 Sigma or the 20 to 75 Tamron, and you think just because the Sigma is more expensive, it might be better, don't rule this one out. And I know that 24 to 28 might be a little bit of a difference, but in all honesty, 28 is more than capable enough for that. But this would be the minimalistic setup of me just vlogging and just kind of being outside and yeah, vlogging myself. So. It looks weird, but it, it works. So like I said, this lens has a great focal range from 28 to 75. So if I want to be doing a little bit more kind of B-roll footage with one lens, this gives me the alternative to do that easily. Oh no, drop the tennis ball, doggy. Little dog, so I got sidetracked. They're kicking the ball, oh my gosh, they kicked the ball too. That's cute. I would show you, but too much work. So anyways, back to what I was talking about. With this focal range, you can do a lot more for B-roll. So we're just gonna kind of do a little montage B-roll sequence real quick. It's gonna be like five, seven seconds. Don't wanna keep you on too long because don't wanna drag this video for too long, but just wanna show you what you can do with all the focal length differences to use it to your advantage as a minimalistic setup. You got some B-roll, now you can also take some tasty photos, just like these. With this setup, you can use it to only bring out one lens and keep it as small and compact as possible when it comes down to a minimalistic setup. This is what I've been personally using now more often, just because when I'm on the go, I don't wanna bring so much gear with me just in case I'm gonna be out for a while, don't wanna have to be carrying a backpack at all times, and don't really need to change lenses all the time. Especially if I'm doing a YouTube video and just wanting to create some photos for social media, I don't really need to bring a prime lens where I can go to 1.4 just to get more blurred background, which which most of the time I don't even shoot that low. It all depends on the situation. This will help you to also just focus on what matters, make sure you get the best shots that you need to with the composition and everything. And you're not having to tinker too much with having to change lenses, but you can just zoom in, zoom out and be good to go. And also then continue vlogging and having your videos done. So anyways, hopefully this helped you out to kind of get a more minimalistic setup so that you can just go out and create because that's all that matters when it comes down to all these videos. It's just to make your life easier to go out and create and have fun with everything. Don't forget the links are down below for everything that I've talked about and for all my other gear so if you want to check it out go for it that way it can help you out hopefully to get the gear that you want to get to keep creating and having fun but with all that said and done guys thank you so much for watching this video make sure to like and subscribe share this video with a friend and i'll catch you guys in the next one see ya